In Creole Parametric, you can use sheet metal mode in order to model flexible printed circuit boards. Let's take a look at how to do that. Here I have an assembly for some consumer electronics. I have the bottom case and inside of here, I want to put in a flexible printed circuit board. I'm going to start off by creating my brand new part. I'll click on new and I will call this flex printed circuit board. And here we have the option to use the default template. You should change the subtype to sheet metal, but I'll show you what happens if you accidentally create it as a solid part and then want to make this a sheet metal part. You can go to the operations overflow menu and then use the command convert to sheet metal part. So this is good. Let me start out by turning on the display of my datum planes. I'm going to create a sketch for the outline of my printed circuit board on the datum plane called top. So I will click on it with the left mouse button and then use the mini toolbar to get into sketch mode. For this shape, I'm just going to make a rectangle. And let's change this, the numbers are really big, let's change that to one inch wide and 14 inches long. Then to get out of sketch mode, I can hold down the right mouse button and use the check mark from the pop-up menu. I don't need to see my datum planes anymore, so I will turn off their display. With the sketch still selected, I will use the planar command in order to give it some thickness and I will accept the default value and hit the check mark. So now that I have my sheet metal part started to simulate the circuit board, I'm going to use sheet metal bends to represent the folding that I'm going to do to this. Let's click on the bend command and for the placement, I'll select the main surface as what I want to bend and I can go to the bend line tab. I can use this for controlling where the drag handles are located or I can just drag them right out to where I want them to be. And when I drag them to the edges, I get additional drag handles for what I want to dimension from. So I could drag this out over here and alternatively, you can use this collector as well to say, hey, I want to dimension that from this edge as well. And so here I can see a preview of the geometry that we're getting. And right now it's folding the opposite side from what I want. So let's use the arrow to flip. And that's good. I want this portion down here to stay uh, straight. And for the dimensioning of this, let me see, let's drag this out over here. That's going in the opposite direction. Let's change the dimensions over here. Let me try a value of six and change this one to a value of five. And right now we are getting a bend of 180 degrees, which is what I want. But I just want to show you from the drop down list, we can just see, you know, what's being bent over here. And that's the side that I do want bent. And let's change this to 180 degrees. When I take a look at this, you can see that we're getting this little slice over here. That's our relief. I'm going to change this relief from the default of rip relief to no relief. That's good and it got rid of that. And let's say I want to simulate that the fold is taking this right down flat against the original surface. In order to get that, I'm going to change the radius from a value of the sheet metal part thickness to a value of zero. And that way we have our first fold in here. That's good. I will hit the check mark and that way we are simulating the first fold in the model. Let's create a couple more in here. Let's do another bend. I'm going to bend this surface. And again, I can go to the bend line tab if I want to use the collectors for picking the different sides in here. And as well as selecting what I want to dimension from. And we see a preview again. It is folding the wrong side that I want. So I will use the flip icon to change that. And for this one, let's again use, let's try six over here and then five for this dimension. That looks good. And once again, I will go to the relief tab, make sure I'm using no relief in here and 180 degrees. 
Again, I want to simulate that this is being folded right flat on the surface. And actually, it's going to the upper side. Let's change it. I want this being folded down on the bottom side. And once again, change this radius to zero. That is good. Let's hit the check mark. And I'm going to put in one more bend over here. I'm going to pretend that this is going to be folded upwards around some other geometry or some other part in the model. So let's put in a bend. I will bend this surface. And let's drag here and here and dimension from this edge and that edge as well. Let's change this to a value of 2. And I want 2 for both of the values. So I want it to be essentially folded right back in on itself. And again, we're getting 180 degrees. I don't have to change the relief in here, but just to be consistent, I'm going to put that in as no relief. And maybe for the thickness over here, let's try a value of 0.1 for the thickness of whatever is going to be in uh, between the folds of my printed circuit board. So that is good for my last bend. I will hit the check mark. And lastly, because this is a printed circuit board, I'm going to change the color to a greenish color. And if you saw an earlier video of mine on how to create a color appearances file, that's why I have so many different colors available to me. I like this green for the part. Select the part top node in the model tree, hit the middle mouse button. Now it has the color that I want. Great. Let's go back to the assembly window. And I'm going to assemble this component. Since I have saved it out to disk yet, I will use in session in order to get to it. And let me grab, that's the part that I just created, click on the open button. I have a config.pro option set that attaches my components to my mouse so I can drop it into the approximate correct location before adding constraints. And for the different constraints, let's select this surface here. I'm going to select the bottom surface by tapping the right mouse button to use query select in order to get it. That's good for the coincident constraint. Let's then add some other additional constraints. I want to have this offset from this surface. Right now, it's giving me a coincident constraint. You can double click on that note in the graphics area to get a drop down list to change the type of constraint that you're using. Here, I'm going to drag it off here. Let's make it a distance of one inch from that surface. And let me hold down the right mouse button to make sure I'm getting a new constraint for the new references that I am picking. Dimension off from that surface. And we're getting coincident. Let's change that to distance. And let's just drag it out to a value of 1 and then hit the check mark. So there I have my printed circuit board located inside of my consumer electronics. One other thing that I want to show you, how are we going to manage the flattened version of this? So let's right click on it and open it in its own separate window again. I'll go back to the model tab. Since this is a sheet metal part, you can use the flat pattern feature to flatten everything out and hit the check mark. But I actually don't want to do that. I don't want to use a flat pattern or do an unbend all uh, in here because that makes my model in the default configuration flattened. But I actually want it to be folded. So I'm going to use a couple different techniques in here. Let me right click on the flat pattern feature in the model tree and delete it. The way that I'm going to manage it is with a couple different tools. First off, let me go to the model properties dialog box. I have that in my quick access toolbar. Uh, for you to get to it, if you don't have the same settings I do, you can go to File and then Prepare, or is it Manage File? One of, one of the menus underneath here you have, there it is, Model Properties, File Prepare, Model Properties. And inside of here, we have a choice for flexibility. Flexibility allows you to change how you are assembling this in different models. Let me choose the change button over here. And for parts, there are six different things that you can make flexible. What I want are the features to be flexible. And I'm going to select the three bend features in the model tree. 
and then click OK. And that way, when someone is placing this in the model in an assembly, they'll be able to choose whether they want these features to be resumed or suppressed. That's just one way that I can maintain control over the different configurations. The other way that I'm going to do it is with simplified representations. And you might be familiar with simplified representations at the assembly level, but you can also create simplified representations at the part level. To do that, let's go to the View Manager. And right now I'm on the Simplified Rep tab. We have two different simplified reps that automatically come with the model, the Master Rep and the Automatic Rep. I'm going to create a new simplified rep. And for this one, I'm going to call it the Unfolded simplified rep and when you create a simplified rep at the part level you have essentially three different ways that you can do it by features work regions and services there's this choice over here for attributes and by default we are including all the different features and we are going to regenerate you can also use something called an accelerator in here but what I want to do is click on features over here and I'm going to exclude these three bends. Let me turn on the display of my columns in here. And there I've excluded the bends in the model. Let me click on the OK button and then done. And that way, let's bring everything back in here and then done return once more. Here I have the unfolded part simplified rep, which I can get to to see what this looks like unfolded and of course I can use this part level simplified rep in different drawing views if I wanted to document it but let's go back to the master rep that includes those three different features and that way I've got my flexible printed circuit board let's hop back over to the assembly one last time I just want to show you the effect of adding flexibility in here if I go to assemble that component again let me go to in session because I haven't saved it and select it here and click open now because I've added flexibility I get this dialog box that allows me to use the flexible definition when I'm assembling it if I say yes here you have the dialog box you can say hey with these different features over here maybe I want to put in a version of this one that doesn't have the third bend let me choose the drop down list and choose suppressed and then click OK and here we have the model that would be assembled in here. Let me drag it up and spin it around over here. And you can compare the two different versions. This one has the additional bend over here, and this one doesn't. Uh, for the sake of simplicity, I'm just going to hit the check mark to drop it in there. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindshield.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.